dubbed uh, partly as one of the only successful or thriving Arab Jewish duos. Is this true? You find this to be accurate? Name another one. Uh, your record label. My understanding is you guys are with Vice. Yeah. yeah. How did you find one another, and how did that happen? I, I was actually working for Vice uh, almost since they started in Montreal. Mm -hmm. I was doing like hip hop reviews for them and stuff, mm -hmm. so I was always friends with them. And uh, I just gave them the early Chromio demos, and they didn't really like them. And uh, and then we did a show in New York uh, in 2002, and it went really well. It was our second show ever, and it went over great. And then they were like, ah, oh, maybe we should sign this. So you know. I mean, you know, it is a gift and a curse to be with Vice because, you know, the fact that the magazine is itself kind of, uh, well, was at that time a little bit on the satirical side, that kind of fed into that misconception of us being this kind of joke band mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, like, again, like, you know, I want to stress that we're aware that we're funny. And, you know, look at us. We're funny dudes. I mean, we're funny looking dudes anyway. But it, you could be funny without being a joke band. We take our music seriously, but we're also very aware that our music is, you know, lighthearted and, and humor, humorous yeah. at times. In terms of the sound and the influences, is very current, but it's also very sentimental, and some could say locked in a certain time period. Yeah, yeah, Do you guys ever feel confined by that? No, it's we feel sheltered by that. Mm. You know, I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about whether or not we sound like Bloghouse. You know, we don't. We sound like. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Yeah. It's better. <laughs> from my understanding, started out with some support from another, not another, but yeah, another electronic artist from Quebec uh, named Tiga. Yeah. Um, yeah. What sort of influence and support did he provide you guys with? Well, he didn't influence us because we, we didn't even know what kind of music he liked. Mm -hmm. And we, we, you know, we didn't know any electronic music when we started Chromio. We, we, we were just really kind of hip-hop knuckleheads, so... We weren't really, but he he supported us. I mean, he it was almost like, you know, he had the incentive to kind of offer us a record deal, and then we would bring him demos, and he'd be really into it once we signed with him. You know, so he definitely he was our first our first fan, you yeah. know, and our first supporter. He yeah, I guess he just saw something. Yeah, and because we were just developed. those two kids ab about town, and he was like, hey, why don't you guys do a record for me? <laughs> mentioning hip-hop um what yeah. what's the hip-hop background that you're referring to my brother and i really we were really into hip-hop for years um mm -hmm. my brother being you know a turntablist during the 90s and i was producing hip-hop and um i guess you can still hear it a little bit and even you know in our attitude or in our lyrics or it's, it's mostly what brought us to to what we know in music is hip-hop yeah. production it's how yeah. we became producers mm -hmm. You know, and then it's how we learned about music too. Yeah, and I grew up, uh, you know, with early uh, De La Soul and EPMD. Yeah. Um, you know, you name it from that era. You and know, all that samples, that all those samples. You know, that that, I mean, basically, we learned about funk music thanks to hip hop because yeah. it's not like we were around in 1973. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, I we knew De La before I knew Parliament. Yeah, you know? exactly. Mm -hmm. When I heard, you know. Um, Knee Deep from Parliament the first time I was like oh this is the De La Soul, De La, you yeah. know I yeah, wasn't I, like, I knew Warren G regulate before I knew what Michael McDonald exactly. was your brother Alan of a track is pretty successful hi himself as well has he influenced you guys and do you guys influence him in terms of music do you learn from one another yeah we I mean you know he gives me music a lot to listen to I mean we just feed off each other and, and everything that we do he's very close to us and uh We've yeah. Been, yeah, we've been like that since we were younger. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him, you since know, I, since I can remember. Yeah, we've seen him win his championships, and yeah. you know, we kind of, were, we escorted him through his whole DJ career, and and now we're just playing shows together. It's actually really fun now. So, yeah, we're very close, and uh, he, he helps us out. And you know, he's actually he's mixing uh, like a remix we just finished. He's just engineering that. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff for us. You filmed something live at we went uh, to Mr. Darryl's, Hall's house. Yeah, we went to Daryl's house and we shot this this web TV episode where we're playing uh, 
a bunch of songs with his band and him or singing duets with him. I imagine there was a lot of mutual respect between you two. Yeah, I mean, it didn't have to be mutual. I'd be happy for him. For to, I mean, I'd be happy to show him my respect, and he didn't have to respect us back, but turns out that he did, so it was nice. Yeah. He's a fan. Fun two days. Yeah, great two days. Yeah.